Okay, so this is speak to be online classes for NCRT 10th standard and uh, CBSC 10th standard. So welcome to the mathematics class. So in the previous class of uh, similar triangles related to Thales theorem, we had solved some riders and also the conceptual problems which were related to the Thales theorem. So in today's session, we'll be going with the very very important problems related to the trapezium uh, riders, that, that is riders of trapezium on Thales theorem. So very important uh, riders, all the three uh, riders what we are going to present today on the trapezium. So they are all very important. So usually one problem in the chapter of single triangles related to trapeziums will occur in the examinations for two or three marks. So today I will be going with the two marks of questions uh, that is two problems on trapeziums and one three mark question on trapeziums. So related, along with we are going to go with the converse of some problems, some very simple numerical problems on converse of Thales theorem. Right. So on the board I am having the first problem here, very important, each and every problem is related to one another. If you learn the first problem that is related to the second, if you learn first and second both well, that both are related to the third problem. So something like that goes on. If you miss a problem on trapezium, you may miss a link for solving some other problem on trapeziums. Right. So be careful, listen carefully, see the videos again and again if you are not able to get it for the first time. It happens, right? Nothing to worry. If you if you listen to listen to the video again and again, you will get to the concept, right? So regarding the classworks. So science notes is being uh, sent to the WhatsApp group. I hope you are copying the notes to your classwork book. You are studying that and getting updated. So and uh, regarding worksheets for polynomials, it has also been sent every day. Many of the students are doing it well. Congrats to you and hats off. In the coming, that is coming Sunday, we will be having a test on polynomials. So today's session is very interesting. Right. So, if you want to get a good grip on riders of Thales theorem, this is the class for you. Right. So, here ABCD is a trapezium in which AB parallel to DC. So, you can see the trapezium here ABCD is a trapezium. So, in which AB is parallel to DC. Okay, you can see AB is parallel to DC now. And its diagonals intersect each other at O. AC is one of the diagonals. The line joining the two non-consecutive uh, vertices, the line joining non two non-consecutive vertices of a quadrilateral is called as a diagonal. So A and C are the non-consecutive vertices, B and D are the non-consecutive vertices, they are joined by two lines, one is AC, another is BD. So here AC and BD are the diagonals, they intersect each other at point O. So O is a common point for both the diagonals, right? So here using this you have to show that. OA by OB, OA by OB ratio, that is ratio between OA and OB is equal to OC by OD, that is the ratio between these two is equal to the ratio between this and this, we have to show it. So it's a very important one. So let us get into the problem. So this is the diagram, this is given, it will be given the, in the examination, the diagram will be given. So let us get into the data. Right. So it's a identity, very important. So ABCD is a trapezium, let us name it. ABCD is a trapezium. ABCD is a trapezium, okay. Uh, AB parallel to DC. AB parallel to CD or DC, whatever it is. Diagonals intersected O. Diagonals. AC and uh, BD intersect, intersect at O. Okay. So now we go to show that. So what is to be shown at the end of the that is identity, right? So you have to show that OA by OB is equal to OC by OD. So this is to be shown. So as data here, what it is given to show this is not sufficient. Therefore, we will go with a little bit of small construction. So this is an extra construction you have to do. You have to remember this and you have to do it. So now draw, uh, draw O 
OE. Right, let us take this as um, a line, right? So draw OE parallel to DC. Okay, draw OE. Draw OE parallel to DC. So this is through construction we are doing it. So draw OE parallel to DC. Right. So let us get into the very important. Very, very important. Right. So now OE is drawn parallel to DC. OE is drawn parallel to DC. So this is we have got through construction. We have got it through construction. But you have drawn OE parallel to DC, but already DC is parallel to AB. But DC is already parallel to AB. So the same that is according to the data. So here you can see AB is parallel to DC, DC is parallel to AB, both are one and the same. So you have drawn OE parallel to DC, but already DC is parallel to AB. So therefore OE is parallel to AB. Therefore, OE is parallel to AB. So now, in triangle, in triangle, DAB, if you take this triangle, in triangle DAB, OE is parallel to AB. That is, we have proved. So in triangle DAB, OE is parallel to AB. Right? So therefore, in a triangle, if a line is drawn parallel to a side of a triangle, then it divides the other two sides proportionately. We will take that proportionality now. So therefore, AE by ED, therefore AE by ED is equal to uh, OB, that is DO or OB, you can take anything you want, OB by OD, OB by OD. So take it as equation 1. So now this is according to Thales theorem. Okay, right. So now we will go to the next step. So here in triangle ADC if you take. In triangle ADC if you take it. So OE is drawn parallel to DC according to the construction. So we will name the triangle and write the parallel sides. So in uh, triangle A, D and C. In triangle A, D, C. OE parallel to DC. So here OE is parallel to DC. Now, so by applying uh, Thiel's theorem, we can apply Thiel's theorem because in triangle ADC we have drawn a line parallel to a side of a triangle. So therefore, it divides the other two sides proportionately. So therefore, AE by ED is equal to OA by OC. AE by ED is equal to OA by OC. Take it as equation 2 and this is according to that is Thales here. Thales here. Okay. So when you compare equations 1 and 2, OB by OD is equal to AE by ED and OA by OC is also equal to AE by ED. So therefore from equations 1 and 2, from equations equations 1 and uh, 2 you can write that as these two things these two things are equal to the same thing therefore they should be equal to one another according to the axiom so therefore uh, OB by OD is equal to OA by OC so here what we have to prove it's not here so we have got something else so here is something else so here OB by OD ratio is equal to OA by OC ratio but for example if you take uh, 1 by 2 is equal to 1 by 2 or something like that 1 by 1 is equal to 2 by 2 that is equal to it cancels and it is 1 by 1 so it remains the same so you can write it like this OA by OB OA by OB is equal to OC by OD OC by so I think it is true. So this is right. The proof for this very important problem will be asked for two marks in your examination. Very important.
problem sum thales theorem very important problem this is very very important it was asked in the examination previous previously for uh, two marks it's very important each and every problem is different every problem is different from one another you have to practice this very well so diagonals of a quadrilateral abcd intersect each other at point o okay let us draw a quadrilateral but how how to draw a quadrilateral what type of quadrilateral we do not know because there are many different types of quadrilaterals right such that oa by ob is equal to oc by od right so that quadrilateral is a trapezium so we will draw a quadrilateral which looks like a trapezium let us not call it as a trapezium that's the thing let us draw a quadrilateral which looks like a trapezium but we will never call it as a trapezium right so that is the diagram so let us take it abcd as a trapezium so here okay abcd is a is a quadrilateral abcd is a quadrilateral diagonals of a quadrilateral abcd intersect each other at point o so let us draw the diagonals bd and uh, ac of the diagonals so let the let the diagonals meet at point uh, o so now so we do we know that it is a quadrilateral but we cannot tell that it is a trapezium because we have to still prove it okay so intersect each other at point o such that oa by ob oa by ob is equal to oc by od so ratio between these two sides is equal to the ratio between these two sides okay if this is the thing show that the quadrilateral is a trapezium we have to show that abcd is a trapezium at the end so in order to prove that a quadrilateral is a trapezium it is enough to show that any one pair of its one pair of the opposite sides are parallel if you show any one pair of its opposite sides are parallel then we can conclude that that particular quadrilateral is a trapezium right so we'll go with the data so according to the data abcd is a abcd is a quadrilateral abcd is a quadrilateral okay so ac and bd uh diagonals ac and bd meet at meet at uh, o okay uh, right and it is given oa by ob so oa by ob is equal to oc by od so this is the very very important step in solving this problem we will change the ratio here. so oa by ob is equal to oc by od can be written as or this can also be written as oa by oc oa by oc is equal to ob by od so if you do this if you remember and if you do this the entire problem becomes very easy for you right so ratio of change oa by ob is equal to oc by od is written as oa by oc is equal to ob by od that's the thing i have done okay so to show that right to show that abcd is a abcd is a trapezium you have to show that abcd is a trapezium right so a small construction is uh, required to prove that abcd is a trapezium so therefore draw draw oe draw oe parallel to ab you do it that is we do it that is we draw oe parallel to ab so draw oe parallel to ab right so let us get into the right so now very important here uh in triangle abc we will take in triangle abc or we we'll take the data and we can move on so whatever uh, we can do so okay let us take the data on now right so oa by oc that is oa by oc is equal to ob by od so better take uh, the triangle itself 
First we will take the triangle ABC. Right. So in triangle ABC, you will take in triangle ABC. Right. In triangle ABC, OE is parallel to AB. OE is parallel to AB. Right. So if a line is drawn parallel to a side of a triangle, then it divides the other two sides proportionately. So therefore, according to Thales theorem, OE is drawn parallel to AB, the base of triangle ABC. So therefore, OA by OC, therefore, OA by OC is equal to, uh, that is, EB by EC is equal to EB by EC. So once again, OE is drawn parallel to AB. So therefore, if a line is drawn parallel to a side of a triangle, then it divides the other two sides proportionately. So therefore, OA by OC, uh, written here, is equal to uh, BE by EC. So EB or by EC, anything. So this is equation 1. So according to Thales theorem. Okay. So now, what it is given? What it is given? But OA by OC is equal to OB by OD. But OA by OC is equal to OB by OD. So take it as equation 2. That is from data or it is given. So here OA by OC is equal to EB by EC and OA by OC is equal to OB by OD. So therefore two things are equal to the same thing. So from equation 1 and 2 that is OB by OD is equal to EB by EC. Therefore, from equations, equations 1 and uh, 2, we can write that, that is OB by OD, OB by OD is equal to EB by EC, EB by EC, right. So, if you look at this in the figure, you can uh, you get new things. So, OB by OD is equal to BE by EC. So if you look at this triangle, that is triangle BDC. If you look at triangle BDC here, OB by OD is equal to BE by EC. That means this line OE is dividing the, these two sides of this triangle in the same ratio. That is what we have got. That is OB by OD is equal to BE by EC. So this line divides triangle BDC that is the two sides that is BD and BC of triangle BDC in the same ratio that means according to the converse of according to the converse of uh, BPT right so this line should be parallel to DC 100% it should be parallel to DC so in triangle if we name the triangle in triangle BDC OB by OD has become equal to EB by EC. So therefore, according to converse of converse of BPT, that is, if the line divides in two sets of a triangle proportionately, then it is parallel to the third side. This is the converse of Thales theorem. So according to that, so here uh, OE should be parallel to DC. So this is the thing what we have proved. But OE was already parallel to AB, drawn a parallel to AB according to construction. Right? So here is the logic. So here we have proved that OE is parallel to DC just now. But OE is, was already drawn parallel to AB. So the OE is parallel to DC and OE is also parallel to AB. That means AB should be parallel to DC. So according to the converse of PPT, OE is parallel to DC but OE is already parallel to AB according to the construction. So therefore AB is parallel to DC. So if one pair of sides, that is one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral or parallel, then we can call that quadrilateral as a trapezium. So therefore, ABCD is a ABCD is a trapezium. Right. Hence it is proved. So this is for two marks, very important.
for your examination, you have to practice this. Okay. Okay, let us go ahead to the next beautiful, the most classical problem on trapeziums related to Thin's theorem. Very beautiful problem. So this uh, this problem on trapezium that is Thales theorem has an influence of the midpoint theorem as well as its converse. Right. So midpoint theorem and its converse you are studying in your ninth standard class. So I will uh, just recapitulate that. So consider a triangle where uh, okay A and B C is the triangle we take it. So X and Y are the midpoints of X and Y are the midpoints of uh, A B and A C. So if we join the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle, then the line joining, the line joining the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle will be parallel to the third side and it will be half of the third side. So this is the midpoint theorem. I hope you remember this. So once again, in any triangle, the line joining the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle will be parallel to the third segment. That means this line will be parallel to this, that it becomes parallel to this and this line's length will be half the length of the third side. So, in any triangle, the line joining the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle will be parallel to the third side and it will be half of the third side. This is midpoint here. So, when we come to its converse, converse of midpoint here, now let us go into this. Let us, let us take try this is triangle ABC. So here X is the midpoint of uh, AB. So when you start a line drawing from the midpoint of one side of a triangle parallel to the other. So yesterday we had done a uh, that is a rider on this a line drawn from the midpoint of a side of a triangle parallel to the other intersects the third side. That is, it is going to bisect the third side. So this is a point that is the midpoint of AB. From the midpoint of AB, parallel to another side, if you draw a line continuously until it meets the third side, then it bisects the third side. That is, it is going to bisect AC, which is equal to AY and YC. That is, AY will be equal to YC. So, this is the converse of midpoint here. Once again, I will repeat. If a line, the line joining the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle is always parallel to the third side and it is half of the third side. This is, this is midpoint theorem. So when we come to the converse of midpoint theorem, the line drawn from the midpoint of a side of a triangle parallel to the other, then it bisects the third side. So this is the converse of the midpoint theorem. Very important statements you have to remember. You have to recall this. So if it is with you, I can easily enter that is to this problem, right? So now let us get to the uh, problem. Prove that in a trapezium, so yes, we have to take a trapezium itself. So in a trapezium, the line joining the midpoints of non-parallel sides of a trapezium. Okay, we will draw a trapezium here. So this is the trapezium I am taking here. So let us draw a trapezium. So let us name it. This is A, B, C, D is a trapezium and we know that one pair of sides are uh, parallel so we will uh, draw these two sides parallel to each other so here the sides which are parallel to each other are unequal and the sides which are non-parallel to each other are equal so this is one of the very important property of trapezium right parallel sides are not equal non-parallel sides are equal right so here AB and uh, DC are the non-parallel sides, AD and BC are the parallel sides. Now, in a trapezium, the line joining the midpoints of non-parallel sides of a trapezium. So I have to mark the non-parallel sides. I will take it as uh, X, that is the midpoint of AB. So therefore, AX will be equal to BX. I will take the midpoint of DC. Uh, let us have call it as point Y. Here, DY will be equal to YC. Right. So, these are the two non-parallel sides. These are the midpoints of these two non-parallel sides. I am going to join this line. Okay. So, here in a trapezium, the line joining. So, this is the line joining the midpoints of. So, these are the two midpoints of non-parallel sides 
of a trapezium or so what it is what happens or uh, is parallel to parallel side so this line is already these two sides are parallel to each other so this line is parallel to this or either this line is parallel to this we have to prove that next one is half of the sum of the parallel sides so here the length of the line joining the midpoints of non parallel sides of this trapezium is the length of this will be equal to half the sum of the length of ad plus bc if you add the length of ad with bc what the sum of the length you get the length of xy will be half of that we have to prove that okay so let us get into the data right so abcd is a trapezium abcd is a trapezium let us name the parallel sides so ab parallel to cd ad sorry ad parallel to bc ad parallel to bc how can it so now uh, ax is equal to xb ax is equal to xb you can write directly dy is equal to yc dy is equal to yc so these are the things uh, right okay let us get into c to, to prove that what we have to prove so we have to prove that uh, the line joining the points of non parallel sides of a trapezium that is line xy is parallel to the parallel sides that is we have to prove that xy is parallel to bc or we have to prove that xy is parallel to ad so first one xy parallel to bc or xy parallel to ad either any any one of them okay we have to prove this and then second point is Half the sum of the parallel sides. So, right. So, the length of x y, the length of x y is half the sum of the parallel sides. That is, A D plus B C. Right. Half the length of the half the sum of the that is parallel sides. Okay. So, let us go with the very important uh, part of the proof. That is, uh, that is construction. Right. So now, produce B A. And produce CD together so that it, they can meet at a point because AB and CD are the non-parallel sides, and if they are extended, they are going to meet at some point above the trapezium. So let us produce this. Produce uh, AB, that is BA, and produce CD. And produce this CD. So let them meet at some point uh, P. The meter at some point P join AC together along with that join AC right let us let us join AC let it meet XY at point Q somewhere so this is the construction you have to do you should not forget this right so construction produce BA and CD to meet at point P produce BA and uh, B A and C D to meet at C D to meet at meet at point okay point P right join A C join A C right so let this A C meet Q that is X Y at point Q so let it meet X Y at point at point Q. Right. So this is the construction. You should not never miss a single point. Every point here is very important and it is required. Okay. Let us get into the part part of the problem that is the proof. Right. So now in triangle PBC you can take. You can see the big triangle here. So in triangle PBC. So in triangle PBC. AD is parallel to BC. See, this is the logic, this is the trick. So, in triangle PBC, you can take AD is parallel to BC. So, AD is parallel to BC. Because AD and BC are the parallel sides of trapezium ABCD. Now, trapezium ABCD is a part of triangle PBC. So, therefore, for triangle PBC, you can take BC as the base and AD as a line which is drawn parallel to the side BC. So, according to the Thales theorem, if a line is drawn parallel to a side of a triangle, then it divides the other two sides proportionally.
proportionately. So in triangle PBC, in triangle PBC, as AD is parallel to BC, therefore PA by AB is equal to PD by DC. PA by AB, PA by AB is equal to PD by DC. PD by DC. So this is according to Hale's theorem. Okay. So now. I will uh, write the uh, PA same thing. AB is the side of apicium ABCD. For AB, X is the midpoint of AB. So therefore, AB can be written as 2AX or twice AX or AB can be written as twice BX because X is the midpoint of AB. So therefore, instead of AB, I am going to write twice AX. That is 2AX is equal to PD by DC instead of DC as Y is the midpoint of DC, DY is equal to CY. So therefore instead of DC, I am going to write twice DY. So it is twice DY. Right. So here are 2 and 2 gets cancelled. So therefore PA by AX is equal to PD by DY. So let us see that what, what it is in this triangle. Now, PA by AX, that is what we have got here, PA by AX is equal to PD by DY. So, this is happening, that is PA by AX is equal to PD by DY is happening in triangle PXY. In triangle PXY. So, in triangle PXY, AD line is dividing the side Px and the side Py in the same ratio. So if a line divides any two sides of a triangle in the same ratio, then it is parallel to the third side. That is, AD is parallel to XY. So here we are going to apply the converse of PPT. So therefore, in triangle P x y p a by a x is equal to p d by d y so therefore according to according to converse of converse of b p t right so a d is parallel to x y or x y is parallel to a d therefore x y is parallel to AD. So we have to prove that XY is parallel to BC or XY is parallel to AD. So we have proved this. So the first uh, work is over. That is XY is parallel to AD. Right, it's over. So now let us get into the second one. That is XY is half of AD plus BC. Let us take this second part. Right. So this is the first part. Now, if you take triangle ABC here. To take triangle ABC. In triangle ABC, for side AB, X is the midpoint. X is the midpoint. And just now we have proved that XY is parallel to BC. We have proved that XY is parallel to AD. It's, it means AD is parallel to BC as it is in a trapezium. Therefore, XY is parallel to BC also. So XY is parallel to BC. Now, in triangle ABC, X is the midpoint of AC, AB, and a line is being drawn from point X, from point X, that is the midpoint of one side of the triangle, parallel to the other. So if a line is drawn from the midpoint of one side of a triangle, parallel to the other, then it, it bisects the third side. So this is according to the converse of midpoint theorem. Right? So observe this, observe this, this is very important. In triangle ABC, X is the midpoint of AB. The line from point X is drawn, that is, it is started from the midpoint of line, that is, side AB, parallel to the third side. So according to the midpoint theorem, the line drawn from the midpoint of a side of a triangle parallel to the other, then the line bisects the third side. So, in triangle ABC, in triangle ABC, 
AB sorry AX is equal to XB and and XQ parallel to BC XQ parallel to BC so therefore according to converse of midpoint here not it is DPT it is converse of midpoint here right so XQ XQ is half of that is BC XQ is uh, half of BC that is it is going to bisect the third set okay you can write like this so AQ is equal to QC so here AQ is equal to QC so once again in triangle ABC X is the midpoint of AB we have drawn a line from point X parallel to BC and this line as it is extended it is going to bisect the third side according to the converse of midpoint here so therefore AQ is equal to QC AQ is equal to QC right so as AQ is equal to QC so here AX by BX is equal to that is 1 is to 1 ratio is AQ is equal to QC that is the same ratio that is AX by BA that is XB is equal to AQ by QC so and also XQ is uh, parallel to BC so therefore as AQ is equal to QC Q is midpoint of Q is midpoint of AC so therefore X is the midpoint of AB Q is the midpoint of AC this is the line now joining the midpoints of the two sides of the triangle then it should be parallel to the third side and this should be half of the third side according to the midpoint here so therefore uh, x q x q is half of b c x q is half of b c now if you take triangle a d c in triangle a d c q y is parallel to a d so q is the midpoint of uh, that is the line a c from this line from this point we are drawing a line parallel to a d and it is going to bisect the third side that is dy but already we know that y is the midpoint of dc so therefore this line becomes the line joining the midpoints of the two sides of the triangle adc so according to midpoint theorem this line should be half of ad so therefore in triangle in triangle adc qy is half of AB. So therefore, XQ plus QY is equal to. We are going to add this. Is half of BC plus half of AD. So XQ plus QY from the figure. XQ plus QY is XY. So therefore, XY is. If you take half half as common here, you can take AD plus BC. So hence it is true. That is the length of the line is half the sum of the parallel side. That is the line joining the midpoints of non-parallel sides of a trapezium is half of the sum of the parallel sides. So this is a very beautiful classical problem on trapeziums, which is very important, very very important. So so here uh, this will be asked in the examination for. Three marks. So I hope you enjoyed the entire session of all the three trapezium problems. So this will be. I hope uh, you have a lot of things to practice because these problems require practice. So in the next session I will continue with the problems. So until then, right, practice the problems. Stay home. Stay safe. Thank you.